The Alexander Bolt Company produces half-inch A-class stainless steel bolts that have a mean tensile strength of more than 4,000 pounds per square inch, the specified quality standard. These bolts are primarily used in the manufacturing of farm impl implements. The company is very concerned about quality and wants to be sure that its A-class product is above the quality standard. A sample of 25 bolts is to be randomly selected from stock and tested for tensile strength. The sample values are recorded in the data table below. Design a test of hypothesis to determine if there is overwhelming evidence that these bolts are better than the specified quality standard. Okay, so we have ourselves a hypothesis test here where we were provided with data um, rather than um, just summary um, information that's within the uh, text of the problem. So down here in the table, we have the 25 randomly selected bolts. Um, so that data is already preloaded. We'll look at that a little later. Uh, but we do want to set up the hypothesis test real quick. And let's see. Null hypothesis and an alternative hypothesis. Um, we looks like we're testing a mean. We have a quantity. We look at our data there. It's quantitative values that are measurements of tensile strength. And we have one sample, which means we'll have one mean in each of these hypothesis statements. So they touted the value 4,000 as to be an industry standard. And they want to test if theirs are well above or greater than 4,000 for tensile strength. So I see that we have um, quantitative data. We have 25. They said there were 25 bolts, and that's how many is in this table below. Um, no mention of um, normality, um, but I feel like because of the small sample size, we're going to assume these are normally distributed. We can, um, we're going to use a T statistic to test this out. So we'll specify that in our guru, which is where we're heading now. So here we are in our guru. We're going to open up the analytics pane. Um, Click on um, the drop down box, go to mean inference, one population. And this time we're actually going to choose a data set because, um, you know, we weren't given summary, we were given a data set. I've named that data set bolts. Let me show you where you can find it. If you want to practice this, you can go to my groups um, and go to our math 153. And then Math 153 online. And if you scroll down there, very right at the bottom is bolts, and it just has 11.2 C. So you can click on that, import that into your data. It tells you they're available now. Close this out. And now when you're here, you can click on here and choose bolts 11.2 C. You probably will not have as many data sets as I do in your data. Now, there's only one variable in that data set, and that is the, the variable tensile strength. That's um, what you saw there on the prior slide. And then it populates, you know, in, in like just the matter of, of a second, it finds the sample mean, the sample standard deviation of the data that was provided. And of course, there were 25 um, measurements there. Um, it also puts that word tensile strength, the variable name tensile strength, down here. And so it says the mean is representing tensile strength. Let's do a test of hypothesis. Um, and I guess one thing that um, wasn't specified was the um, significance level. And so we have to decide on the significance level. Let's, let's go for... Um, 0 0.01, that's a choice I'm making since it wasn't given. And then that's to ensure that, um, you know, alpha, our significance level represents a type one error. And we want to be a, only a 1% chance that a type one error occurs. But you can edit this to any level you want. 
we're going to go for greater than and because we want to be above industry standards and then of course the 4,000 and here we'll choose the T statistic. So everything is set. We've told it, we've given it the data, told it what the hypothesis would look like on a significance level and um, told it to use the T statistic method. So now we're going to click preview. And again, it just gives you back um, that mean and standard deviation it calculated on its own. Let's look here. Um, we've got a test statistic of 3.43 right here. Um, the p-value is 0 0.0108, et cetera. Um, so it looks like our p-value is really incredibly small there that couples a really large um, test statistic of 3.43. And there it is on the graph. You can see there's 3.43 for the T value. It's way almost off the, the graph. And that corresponds to the, to the, the mean of um, well above 4,000 that we observed in the data set. Uh, it was like 4,013.7 out here. Um, that was our observed sample mean from our data. So I think we know what our decision will be. Let's go back. So very quickly. Uh, these are the null and alternative again. Our T stat was equal to 3.43. And our P value, so our probability value, the area under the curve there in our model was 0 0.0011 when I rounded to four decimal places. Remember, we chose the alpha to be 0 0.01. So we're doing a side-by-side -side comparison here of the um, p-value and, and the significance level alpha. And um, if we talk about which one's smaller or larger, I would definitely say with another zero here before uh, the first non-zero digit being present in this one, that the p-value is much smaller or less than alpha, which means we should reject our null hypothesis, which means this is gone, which means the data is lending support and is more consistent with the alternative hypothesis. And to wrap that up, it's telling us that um, they sample data is supportive of their bolts having a mean tensile strength that's significantly greater than 4,000 PSI.